Hello and welcome to our special coverage of Donald Trump's criminal trial. I'm Linda Kincaid in Atlanta. I'll have all the latest developments on our top international stories, including the growing student protests across the United States and around the world. But first, let me welcome our Paula Newton, who is outside the courthouse in Manhattan. Hi, Paula. Hello, Linda, and thank you to you. And a warm welcome to viewers joining us in the United States and all around the world. Now, the prosecution's first witness in the Donald Trump hush money trial returns to the stand when court resumes in about a half hour from now. We have already seen the president enter. Now, Trump's attorneys will continue cross-examining David Pecker, the former publisher of the National Enquirer. Over three days of testimony now, Pecker has detailed several so-called catch-and-kill operations to prevent allegations of affairs involving Trump from becoming public. Trump has denied, you remember, any of these affairs ever happened. The prosecution says catch and kill schemes were part of a broader effort to keep negative stories about Trump under wraps during the 2016 presidential campaign and to try and undermine the integrity of the election. Now, Judge Juan Roshan may also announce a ruling on the prosecution's claim that Trump has repeatedly violated his gag order on the case. And remember, the prosecution continues to say that he is in a state of really violating that gag order again and again. The judge now says he's scheduled another hearing next week on some of those new alleged violations. We want to throw it now back to Linda in Atlanta as we go to the rest of this day's top stories. Linda. Thanks, Paula. Well, protests in support of Palestinians in Gaza have spread across a growing number of college campuses here in the U.S., and some are facing crackdowns by police. Take a look. This is the chaotic scene from Emory University in Atlanta, where 28 people were arrested on Thursday, including two professors. A scene and crew witnessed police using a stun gun on at least one protester who authorities say was a resisting arrest. In Washington, officials at George Washington University asked the police to assist in relocating an unauthorized protest encampment. And on the West Coast, the University of Southern California says it's cancelling the main stage graduation ceremony next month over safety concerns. The protests in the U.S. have brought together students from a variety of backgrounds, including Palestinians, Arabs, Jews and Muslims. And most of the demonstrations are calm and peaceful. Take a listen now as children in Gaza thank all of the protesters for their support. We respect the students of your university. Thank you, the students of Columbia University. We respect you. We hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Well, let's get a closer look now at those pro-Palestinian protests at Emory University here in Atlanta, where 28 people were arrested. CNN's Nick Watt reports. Pepper balls fired. <laughs> and a lot of muscle. No, no, no. Deployed against protesters at Emory in Atlanta. It was an overwhelming amount of force against a group of college students. Two professors among those arrested. I saw a large person seemingly assaulting one of our students. We were peaceful. The administration blames trespassers for the tents and the unrest. These individuals are not members of our community. They are activists attempting to disrupt our university. Emory does not tolerate vandalism or other criminal activity on campus. This movement is mushrooming. A brand new protest at Princeton. Popular University for Gaza. We are making history. A protest encampment popped up at UCLA. After the violence and standoff across town at USC that led to nearly 100 arrests, this private university is closed to the public. And USC just cancelled their commencement main stage event, scheduled for May 10th, which usually draws 65,000 people. In Boston at Northeastern University, police encircled the protest, then backed off. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has called Colombia's decision to call in the NYPD horrific on X. 
Columbia decided to hold its students accountable to the laws of the school. The NYPD's chief of patrol replied, maybe you should walk around Columbia and NYU and listen to their remarks of pure hatred. Fellow Representative Ilhan Omar did visit Colombia with her daughter, who's been arrested and suspended during these protests, which kick-started this movement. <laughs> Talks with protesters continue. If they fail, say Colombia administrators, they will have to consider options for restoring calm to campus. Here at UCLA, a growing but peaceful protest. I think they've learned from what happened at USC, where security and the police went in pretty heavy here at UCLA, almost zero visible police or security presence whatsoever. What's a bit odd, though, is even if you're a student here right now, you can't walk across your campus because the protesters have put a barricade up around their encampment and you've got to register with them and wear a mask before they'll let you in. Media not allowed in and they're even trying to stop photojournalists from filming from outside in. Nick Watt, CNN on the UCLA campus in Los Angeles. Oh, thanks to Nick. Well, CNN's Paula Sandoval joins us from New York's Columbia University, the epicenter of these demonstrations here in the U.S. Good to have you with us, Polo. So just explain what's been happening at Columbia, because as we've been seeing, there have been arrests happening across campuses right across the U.S., uh, both students and professors. Uh, just take us through their demands. Yeah, and as you point out, Linda, this is where that uh, wave of demonstrations really, this is the epicenter. And our colleague, Abby Washer, reporting that overnight participants of that pro-Palestinian encampment still here on campus at Columbia University were told that what the university is offering as part of these days-long negotiations is simply falling short of their demands, which I'll remind you and our viewers around the world includes two key items, which is divestment from companies with Israeli ties and also amnesty for the students and faculty who have been disciplined for participating in these demonstrations. Additionally, Abby also reporting that those students were told that as part of these day ongoing negotiations, that they are discussing the possibility of a potential statement that will be issued either by the university or by the president herself, possibly addressing the events of last week. You recall the Columbia University actually reached out to the NYPD last week, asked them for assistance to step onto the campus to then assist uh, the, the, what was taking place here in removing an encampment that would eventually simply uh, uh, pop up again. So uh, that really gives you an idea of what the current situation is right now that's playing out here. Initially, there was a conversation that talks about a possible deadline. However, yesterday, as we heard from organizers, uh, this is really more of a timeline uh, for these conversations that are happening right now as they try to bring this to a, a peaceful resolution. The main objective for the campus is really just they want that encampment dismantled, Linda. Yeah, and of course, Paula, we know that the Palestine Legal has uh, already filed a federal civil rights complaint against the school, arguing that uh, the university is accused of discriminating against uh, people, uh, Palestinian yeah. students and also pro-Palestinian yeah. protesters. You've been speaking to students there, both those participating in these protests and those who aren't. What have they been telling you? Yeah, you touch on a really important voice in all of this. That is those uh, students at Columbia University who are, uh, in, in some sense, really ke keeping an objective distance from these ongoing demonstrations, who are just observing what's playing out while their spring semester draws to a close. I had an opportunity to speak to one graduate student here at Columbia. He declined to speak publicly because the uh, atmosphere is just so politically charged right now. But he did say that he's expected to graduate next month. And though he supports the protests that are ongoing, uh, both for Israel and for Palestine on campus, he does have very real concerns that this could potentially disrupt his graduation ceremony. And think about it, Linda, this is the class of 2024, started four years ago during the pandemic. So as this student laid out, he's now bracing for the real possibility that his undergraduate years at Columbia may very well end the way they started with disruption, disruption albeit on very different levels, of course. Yeah. All right, Paula Sandoval for us in New York. Good to have you on the story. Thank you. Well, campus protests are also happening in Paris at a major French, un French university with strong ties to Columbia University in New York. For the third day in a row, dozens of students are chanting in the streets. And that's where we find our senior international correspondent, Melissa Bell, who's joining us outside Sciences Po University. Good to have you there, Melissa. So we've seen here in the U.S. these protests expanding, intensifying. 
What are you seeing there in Paris? Well, very much a, a movement that comes uh, inspired by what's happening over the U.S. And going to what just Polo was just telling you from uh, Columbia University, we've just been hearing here outside Sciences Po student leaders tell the students about the latest in their negotiations with administrators. And it's remarkably similar to what you've been seeing in New York and in other American uh, campuses. What they've been saying is that so far the negotiations are not going well. The university is not giving them their principal demand, which is uh, similarly to the United States, the idea that Sciences Po uh, should boycott any companies that have ties to Israel. In fact, what the student leaders have been saying is that the administration is threatening to do as they did on Wednesday at another site and bring in the police uh, to clear them out. Extremely controversial. It was Wednesday and so it would prove again uh, should that happen again. There also says a student leader being threatened with suspension from the school should they carry on their protests. As you can imagine, Linda, this is more grist to their mill and what the students say is that they intend uh, to stay here occupying uh, this, one of the main sites of Sciences Po University here in Paris, really one of France's most prestigi prestigious. This uh, site they've been occupying since yesterday and they say they're going to stay until their demands is met. Not just keeping up pressure on the administration of their university, but more broadly trying to draw attention as students have on American University to the plight of Palestinians inside Gaza and calling for an urgent end to the war. And of course, here in the U.S., Melissa, we've seen the University of Southern California move to uh, cancel its graduation ceremony. And of course, Columbia University has moved its classes online. What have been the ramifications there? What do you expect to happen going forward? Well, this is only day three. It had begun on Wednesday at another site. They were cleared out relatively quickly. We understand uh, the administrators telling the students, as the students here have told us, that the government was bringing pressure on them to move the students out as quickly as they could. Uh, so far, it would be the lessons inside this building, occupied as it has been since yesterday evening, uh, that haven't been able to take place. But the university simply hasn't had a chance for now uh, to organize uh, any kind of uh, um, distance learning and there's no suggestion that they intend to do so. Uh, right now the barricades uh, remain in place all along this building and what the students say is that they intend to keep them there Linda. All right, Melissa Bell we will check in with you again soon. Melissa Bell in Paris thanks so much.